it says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, look at verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Verse 3 says, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Verse 4, our final verse, From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being good. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for caring for us. Thank you, Lord, for providing for us. Thank you, Lord, for shielding us and putting a hedge of protection around us. Father, the un Father, we want to say thank you for the unseen dangers, Lord, that we didn't even know about. Thank you, Lord. Father, we've praised you. We've worshipped you. We've adored you in song. And Father, we're asking now that you speak to our hearts, speak to our circumstances. Lord, minister to our needs as only you can. And Father, it's my prayer as your humble servant that you touch the ears of your people that they hear your word. Touch their minds that they gain a better understanding of your word. Father, touch their hearts that they receive your word. Touch their lips that they speak your word. And Father, touch their feet that they run with your word. It's in the mighty, precious name of our Lord, our Savior, our King, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let all say amen. Your name may be seated in the presence of our Lord and our King. We've been dealing with this series entitled, My Faith. Somebody say, My Faith. Uh, if you uh, have not been here the last couple of weeks, you certainly have been missing some power-packed messages dealing in this very subject entitled, My Faith. Somebody say, My Faith. Uh, Jesus, uh, when he uh, was dealing with a man that brought his son that needed to be delivered, he, uh, he said this to this man. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And that was the backdrop. That was the foundation for the message that was entitled, My Faith Says It's Possible. How many believe that there's nothing too hard for your God? How many trust and know that if God says he's going to do it, it is absolutely going to get done because God says it can be done? How many believe that there is nothing impossible that with God you can't do in him? Amen. Am I the only one that believes that? And so, so, so God set the atmosphere and set the stage for that because he wanted us to understand in order for you to walk in this next level that you're going to, you've got to have the faith to believe that all things are possible. And then on last week, God blessed us with a message along with some demonstrations to help us to know that our faith has to say yes. You've got to know the world will tell you no. Man will tell you what can't be done, but your faith has to say yes. In fact, your faith has to be more powerful than any no that's put before you. There are many folks that could be out of work, but because their faith said, I'm going to have a job, their faith got them the job that somebody else said they couldn't have. There are some things that man is going to tell you you don't qualify for, but if you have the faith for it and God said it is yours, then your faith is going to say you can have it. How many believe that in the name of Jesus? Jesus. So, so God has been blessing us with the word today, and but God wants to really speak to somebody's heart today. God has been ministering to me all week long, and God wants me to share with you and share with somebody else that today's message you need to hear. Today's message is entitled, My Faith Says It's Already Done. Uh, I'm going to say that one more time because somebody needs to hear it. My faith says it's already done done look at somebody close to you and tell them my faith says it's already done look at somebody on the other side and tell them my faith says it's already 
done. Now, now, now we've got we to deal with this right now because if we are going to move into this new season that God says we are already in, you've got to change your mindset. You've got to shift your mindset now from thinking it's possible to already knowing it's already done. You've got to have a change of mindset in this season that we're in to stop thinking that it may be possible and start saying with surety, not only is it possible, it's already done. What God is trying to get us to in this next level, in this next stage that we're going to, in that there's a season right now that God says we are in, that you can have it because you have the faith that says you can have it. God says you can walk in it right now if your faith says you can walk in it. God says right now I need some folks that believe without a shadow of a doubt that there's nothing that cannot happen if God says it can happen in your life. Are there at least two or three, five or ten folks that can say I believe it's already done? Somebody shout it's already done. Somebody shout with me it's already done. Oh my God, go to this text with me to Joshua 1 verse 2. God, we're going to set the stage for this because it says in Joshua 1 verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go. Wait a minute, God here, he deals with this thing with Joshua and he hits Joshua with a blow. Look at this. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you got to deal with this. There are going to be times in your life where life's going to deal you a blow. There are going to be times where you're minding your own business and you're driving down the street and one of your tires is going to blow out. And God is going to look to see how you're going to react and respond. There's going to come a time in your life when you wake up and everything seems fine, but then when you get to the office to your job, somebody's going to say something or do something that's going to deal you a blow and God is going to not deal with them. God's going to look and see what you're going to do. There are going to be times in your life when everything's going well at work. But when you get home and cross the threshold of the garage door into the house, there's going to be an argument that you wasn't expecting. And you're going to be dealt a blow. And God is going to be looking to see how you're going to respond when you're hit with that blow. Look at this. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. But then he says, now therefore, arise. Somebody say, get up. This is not the time or the season for you to be fainthearted. This is not the season for you to be wallowing in your misery. This is not the season for you to be sitting in a corner crying yourself to sleep. This is a season where no matter how hard you get hit, you stand tall and stand in the faith that God has given you. This is a season where in spite of the blows that are given to you, you stand tall and be able to say, I hope you hit me with your best shot because I'm about to hit you with the faith of God. And when I hit you with the faith of God, you will come tumbling down. How many believe it's already done? So so, so he says here, he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Arise. Somebody, the doctor has told you what they had to say. But God wants you to know, until I've had the last say, that is not what's going to happen in your life. That job interviewer man told you you don't deserve or you don't qualify for this job. But God says, I'm going to have the last say. Matter of fact, you might end up being a boss. It's already done. (laughs) God is saying here, he says to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Arise. Go. Wait a minute. I got hit with a personal blow. But you are telling me to get up and get moving. There are some mountains that need to be climbed and God is needing you to climb those mountains with your faith. But what God will do is God will let life slap you a couple times to see if you can still have the faith to climb the mountain that's in front of you. God will have you start something and man, you're excited when you start it, but then he'll let life slap you to see if you still got the faith to keep it going. It's easy to start something. It takes a lot of faith to keep what you started going. It's easy to say I do on that marriage, on that day of your wedding, but it's a lot of work, a lot more work to stay in the marriage when things aren't going so well. It's easy to say I want a baby, but by, by the time that baby hit 15 or 16 and they start talking to you like you don't know what you're talking about, it's harder to deal with it then. But you got to have the faith that God, if I brought them in this world, I'm going to raise them until they get out of my house, but they're going to do what I'm telling them to do until they do that. He says, he says here, he says, Moses, 
my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. There's something else God wants us to understand here. He says, there's another critical step here. In order for you to move into your next season, you got to be able to let go of your past. Folks, right now, God is trying to take you to your new, but you're still crying over the old. God's trying to do a new thing in your life, and yet you're still crying about the old thing. Uh, God got a bow ass for some of y'all single women out there. But y'all still crying over the other, the lazy. Finish the sentence how you want to finish it. God's got something better for you, but you can't keep weeping and crying over what's happened in the past. God is trying to move you into a new destiny, but you can't keep sulking and crying over what, what was. He says here, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go. Somebody say, get up and go. If you are still holding on to something in your past, you can't possibly move into something that's in front of you. God says you aren't even fit for the kingdom if you put your hands to the plow and you look back. God says the kingdom-minded believer that I'm looking for knows how to let stuff go. You may have hurt me in the past, but you know what? I don't even trip on that anymore because I got too much destiny on my life to be concerned about what you said 10 years ago. God's got the greatness in my life, and God's got greatness for your life, and you can't worry about what thus so-and-so said and who did this and who didn't do that. God says if you're going to move into that new dimension, that next level, you've got to release your past. Matter of fact, write it down if you got to, ball it up, put it in the trash or burn it, whatever you got to do to eradicate it out of your life. And here's the thing, if they're in your past, stop answering their phone call. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. If they're in your past, stop responding to their emails. They may have a text message. If it's in there, if it's a text message, do not answer the phone. Do not answer the text. As a matter of fact, you need to change their name in your phone and say, do not answer. I'm not dealing with him anymore. Do not answer. I'm not dealing with her anymore. You need to let go of your past. Notice what he says. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. If it's over, it's over. I don't want you, Joshua, to go looking for something that's dead. I've got destiny on your life. Where the God says that they hid Moses' body. God hid his body. Why would he do that? Because he didn't want Joshua or anybody else going to look for their past. There was something wrong with some of us. That's what we do. The minute that old joker call you or pull you up on Facebook, send you, poke you, or do whatever it is, you get to thinking about what used to be. God says, that is dead. I done sent somebody else to be in your life, and you can't see him. You can't see her because you're still crying over somebody else. Notice he says, he says, now therefore, arise, Go. If you're going to take hold of what's already done in your life, you have to have the faith to get up and start going. If God says that degree is already yours, you need to get up and start going to class. God says, I've already seen it in heaven. I already see the degree with your name on it. I already see you walking across the stage. But now you got to have the faith to get up and start going to class again. God is saying there's somebody that wants a business that's been wanting to start a business. And God says, I already see the business with your name as owner on the license. I already see you walking in the business. I already see you cutting the tape towards for the grand opening. God says, it's already done, but now you got to start the business. You got to write the business plan. You got to put the business plan in action. God says, it's already done, but you got to start acting like it. Somebody say, it's already done. But notice now, notice now, he says, now, therefore, arise. Somebody say, get up. Then he says, go. Somebody say, go. He says, over this Jordan, you and all this people. Here we see God gives Joshua now a faith test. You know what God wants somebody to know? Before there's a faith blessing, there's going to be a faith test. Before there's a faith healing, there's going to be a faith test. You can't know that God's a healer unless you hurt him. <laughs> you can't know that God is a provider unless you need provision. Hmm. You can't know that God is a deliverer unless you need to be delivered. 
So God will put you in a faith test to see if you have the faith to believe what he's about to do in your life. Oh, God wants somebody to know you are this close to something powerful happening in your life. Oh, that wasn't enough for me to receive. I received that for myself. God wants somebody to know you are this close to receiving what God says is already yours. How many believe that in the name of Jesus? God wants somebody to know I had to test you because I know what's about to happen in your life. God says I had to allow the test to come because I know what the enemy is about to do. See, the enemy is about to hit you in your mind to try and convince you that what God said is not going to happen. But God said I've already tested you in that regard. So when the enemy comes, you can say to the enemy, you can hit me with your best shot. But God has already slapped me around a couple of times. And if God slapped me around, I can handle what you're about to do. You got to be ready for the test because God says a test is coming even though you don't expect it. How many hate when you get tested at the most inopportune time? I hate it when I get tested and I ain't ready for the test. But how many know that's the best time to be tested by God? I, I was sharing at the 8.30. There's this movie I watch. I probably watch it a hundred times. It's about this submarine and the crew on the submarine. And the captain of the submarine, he, 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 uh, there's a fire that takes place on the submarine. And they, they're rushing and, and the crew puts out the fire in the kitchen. And then as soon as the fire gets put out, the captain of the submarine calls a missile drill but the executive officer he goes to the captain and he says I don't think this is a good idea right now and the captain looks at him and says why don't you think so he said because the men are tired and they're frustrated from fighting this fire then the captain he gets on the intercom he says let me get attention to all the crew uh, the executive officer thinks that there wasn't a good idea for me to ca call this drill this test during the middle of a fire and the, the captain said that was the best time to call it because he said, do you think the enemy cares whether or not you're ready? <sighs> he said, we are at war, man. And when you are at war, you got to be ready at all times. God wants somebody to know we are at war with God. And God says, as long as the enemy has his imps ready to attack you, you got to be ready to take the fight regardless of when it happens. I know you may be hurting right now, but God says you need to be prepared in case something comes your way. He says here, he says here, he says here, he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go. <laughs> now, jump with me to verse 3. Jump with me to verse 3. Because he says in verse 3, God says to Joshua these words, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Read that again. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Here we see a faith directive given by God to Joshua. The faith directive is followed then by a promise that it's already done. He says, every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given to you. God is saying, if you have the faith right now to walk to it, you have the power, God says, to go ahead and have it. If you have the faith to walk in it, God says, I've already done it for you. If you have the faith to believe it, God says, I've already created an atmosphere to bless you with it. God wants somebody to know, if you got the faith right now in this season, you need to start walking as if it's already done. Uh, let, let me come down your street. Uh, God says we're in a season right now where if you believe that God said you could have a house, you need to go walk in the house. You need to start putting your hands on the doors. You need to start putting your hands on the cabinets. You need to start picking the colors you want in the house. You need to start picking what kind of carpet you want in the house. You need to say, instead of carpet, I want hardwood floors. Instead of regular refrigerator, I want stainless steel. Instead of this, I want that. Instead of that, I want two-inch blinds. I want it to look like this. You need to see yourself already in the house. You need to say to other folks, this is where my bed going to be. This is where the dresser's going to be. This is how I'm going to put my clothes in the closet. God says, if you can walk 
in it, you can have it. How many believe that right now in the name of Jesus? God says instead of just seeing it, you need to go sit in it. God says there's a new vehicle in somebody's future. You need to just go sit in that car right now. Start touching the leather. Start touching the steering wheel. Get yourself in the vehicle. As a matter of fact, go to the lot. Sit down in it. Take a good deep breath of the car. Get that new car smell all in your lungs. Get the new car smell all in your mind. Start driving it around. When you take it on the test drive, don't just drive it. Lean back in that thing as if it's already yours. God says you got to start acting like it's already done. God wants somebody to know there's a business owner. You've been talking about starting a business, but God says you need to start walking in that thing. Go to a business that looks like yours. Start touching the cash register. Start touching the doors. Start touching the business. Start touching the walls. Go talk to the business owner. Tell them what's in your heart. Let the business owner tell you what's in their heart and start telling them what God said is about to happen in your life. And you just need to start acting as if you already got the business. You need to see the business license on the wall. You need to see yourself opening up the doors. Welcome to my business. Thank you for being a customer. You need to start rehearsing what you're going to say when your customers start walking through the door. God says you need to act like it's already done. Somebody shout it's already done. Uh, oh my God. He, he says to Joshua, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. And, uh, you got to have a place right now. Well, you got to start seeing it before you see it. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> but Orlando, you got to see it before you see it. Mm. Let me say that one more time. You got to see it before you see it. It's got to be so real that you can practically touch it even though it doesn't even exist right now. God says we call those things which be not. As though they were. Somebody shout, it's already done. How, how many believe it's already done in your life? Uh, he, says, he, says to, he says to Joshua, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. How many, are there some crazy folks in here? Uh, how many crazy believers we got in here? You, do y'all mind getting on y'all feet just for a couple of seconds? Uh, if y'all don't mind, we're, we're going to declare some things tonight. We're going to decree some things today. Uh, this is going to be an interactive sermon. I ain't going to be the only one releasing something into the atmosphere. I'm just going to speak it, but you got to receive it and speak it for yourself. If you believe that, repeat after me. I see myself, I see myself doing, doing what God says what I, can I can do. I see myself. I see Driving what God says I can drive. I see myself living where God says I can live. I see myself healed because God says I am healed. I see myself being what God says I can be. If you believe that, give God a great praise. Uh, oh my God. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. We're in a season right now where you got to know that it's already done. Well, we're in a season right now. You can't think it could happen. You got to know it's going to happen. In your prayer life, you got to even believe it's already done. Go, go to Mark eleven twenty four. Jesus helps us with this. Even when you pray, you got to pray as if it's already done. Mark eleven twenty four. Jesus says these words. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Good God Almighty. If you're going to ask for healing, you need to ask as if it's already done. God, I need you to heal my body. Thank you for what you've already done. God, I need a job, and thank you for the job you're going to bless me with. It's already done. you got to act, talk, breathe, praise, pray as if God has already done it in your life. Uh, now, now, am I the only one that's ordered anything online? Uh, how many have ordered something online? If I show hand. Quite a few people. You know what's funny? When you order something online, you look at what you want, right? 
and you point and you click it and you move it to what's called the cart. And then after you're ready to check out, you hit the little checkout button. Y'all, y'all, y'all keeping up with me, right? So, and after you hit the checkout button, then what you do is it calculates the product's cost plus shipping and handling. And then you get a total, right? And then after that, you pay for it. And after you pay for it, what do you get? You get a confirmation. Good God Almighty. And then after you get a confirmation about 24 hours or less, give or take, you get what's called a tracking number. Now, I don't know about anybody else. I'm going to only talk for myself. The, the last thing I need to get is a confirmation number and a tracking number. Because when I get a tracking number, I start tracking my package. <laughs> But here's here's my mentality. I've ordered something. I'm expecting what I ordered to be delivered because it's already mine. I'm not looking because I think it's mine. I'm looking because I know it's mine. I'm not looking for something that I didn't pay for. I'm looking for something that's already paid for. So when I go to the mailbox the next day and it's not there, I still have the hope that maybe not today, but it's going to be tomorrow. And if it don't come tomorrow, it's going to be the next day because I've already paid for it. It's already mine. It's just a matter of when, not a matter of if. God is looking for some spiritual warriors to have a delivery mentality. I'm just looking for my UPS angels to bring my blessing. I'm just looking for my Federal Express blessing to come out of heaven. It's already been paid for. It's already been done. But guess where my tracking number is? It's right here in the Word of God. God says I already got it. I just need to look for it. I don't have it today, God, but I'm going to believe you for it tomorrow. I didn't get it tomorrow, God, but I know no, I'm going to get it at any time. Can God get out? I'm ready to receive what God says is mine kind of praise. Good God Almighty. Oh, my God. Go, go to Joshua 1 and 3. Go to Joshua 1 and 3. He says, every place <laughs> that the sole of your foot would tread upon. Now, now, notice now. God doesn't say every place that the sole of my feet tread upon. He says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon. What does that say to us? God has already done it. He's just waiting on you to catch up with what he's already done. God has already sealed it. He's just waiting on you to catch up to what he's already sealed and delivered for you. He says here, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon. As God, God said, i got to pause right here for a second. We're in such a season right now. It's important. In this season, don't try to convince folks what God said is already done in your life. If he already said it's yours, If they don't believe it's already yours, stop talking to them. If God says it's already done, if they don't receive it's already done, stop telling them. Stop sharing your dreams with folks that didn't hear from God like you did. And guess what? A lot of times it's family. Family will kill a dream long before your enemy will. There's some folk in your family you need to stop talking to about what God said. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How you doing? All is well. That's all you need to know. All is well. If God says he's done it, then that's all that matters. And stop walking with folks that don't believe like you believe. We're in a season right now where something big is about to happen. Ah. Something big is about to take place. Oh, no, 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 no. Something big is about to take place.
And because something big is about to take place, you can't allow negativity to come into your heart and into your mind. He says to Joshua, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Joshua had to have the mentality that if God said it, it's already done. But, but look at this. I want to read this again because there's a deeper revelation we got to see here. He says to Joshua, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. <laughs> read that again. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Read that one more time. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Uh, Y'all mind if I teach just for a second right here? Uh, uh, I, uh, God has given me the anointing to teach. Uh, I know this is one of the things he's given me. but and, and it's interesting about what God says here to Joshua. Because rarely in a statement do you have two tenses that exist at the same time. Usually when a person speaks, they either speak in the past tense, the present tense, or the future tense. In a sentence, normally it's either going to be past tense, present tense, future tense. When somebody says, I am going to the store, that's future tense. But then you may have somebody say, I've already gone to the store, that's past tense. Or you might hear somebody say, I'm at the store now, that's present tense. But God is a bad boy. <laughs> Because God, when he said to Joshua, he said to Joshua in this statement, and he used both past tense and future tense. Now let's look at this text again. He says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Now, now let's see it in the educational sense. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, future tense, I have given past tense you. Good. Can, can I shout all by myself? Oh, my God. Do you see the revelation that God just gave to somebody? God says, you ain't even seen it yet, and I've already blessed you with it. You ain't even walked in it yet, and God says, I've already delivered it to you. God says, you haven't even dreamt about it yet, and I've already blessed you with it. God says, there's some stuff you haven't even desired yet, and I've already occurred in your life that when you get there, you're going to already have it. Oh, my God. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 2 verse 9. Well, when I saw that, I began to S-O-T-I. Uh, I know that's new for some of y'all. So y'all got, got a hip pastor, see? Uh, I'm down with the social media game. And so, so you got to know, you got to know what these young kids and how they communicate. You know, in the social media game, you got to know what LOL means. That means laugh out loud. So, catch up with me, catch up with me. Uh, you got to know that SMH means shaking my head. You, you, you know, you yeah, I'm cool. I'm down with that. You got to know R-O-F-L means rolling on the floor laughing. You, you got to know those things. So, so, so when I saw that revelation that God said that every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given. I began to S-O-T-I. Uh, that's when we're going to start a whole new social media trend. Because when I saw that, I began to shout on the inside. <laughs> Good God of my... <laughs> Well, when I saw that, I began to S-O-T-I because I know that if I walk in it, God has already given it to me. If I can see it, God says I can have it. If I can touch it, God said it's mine. God says if you walk in it, I'm going to bless you with it. So I began to S-O-T-I. How many are S-O-T-I in right now? It may not look like it, but you S-O-T-I in. You just shouting all by yourself. Then you sitting at your cubicle, and they wonder why you smiling. I'm just S-O-T-I in. You riding down the street, and the folks looking at you, wondering what's wrong with you. Don't worry about it. It, I'm just S-O-T-I and I just got a revelation from God so I'm shouting on the inside is there anybody else shouting on the inside good God almighty go, go with me to 1 Corinthians 2 and I go go with y'all sit down y'all pushing me y'all pushing me 1 Corinthians 2 and I uh, God, God want to prove just how done it is in your life 
Look at this. God wants to prove in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 how done it is in your life. Look at this. He says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God is preparing. Oh, no, I know I'm reading a different translation, so let me try that again. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God is going to prepare. No, no, I mean, hold on, clean my glasses. Huh? Let me read that again. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. God says, you ain't even seen it yet. It's already done. <laughs> Good God Almighty. You haven't even heard it yet. It's already done. Goodness. You haven't even imagined it yet in your imagination. It's already done. God says, you haven't even desired it in your heart yet. And I've already made sure it's going to happen when you get there. What I love about God is this. You may not have the faith for it today. But if you can have faith for it, God is already waiting on you when you get there. Go back to our text. Joshua 1 verse 3. My faith says it is already done. Joshua 1 verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. You may not have the faith this week, but when you find the faith next week, you're going to discover God has already blessed you with it by the time you get there. You may not have the faith for it this month. you saying to yourself, give me six more months. And God's going to already be in your six months worth of faith waiting on you to walk in what he said is already yours. I'm stupid enough to believe in what God said. I'm a fool for God. I have stopped concerning myself with what man thinks about me and where I am in my faith. You can laugh at me all you want. I know what God has already said is going to happen in my life. You can snicker behind my back. Matter of fact, I'm glad I'm the butt of your joke. Because when it's all said and done, <laughs> God going to be in heaven and I'm going to be right here on earth laughing when he gets done doing what he's already said is done in my life. He says to Joshua, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I said. Notice, he said, as I said said to Moses. That's important. God has already said it. And he's already done it. So even though you don't have it right now, you should be celebrating that you're going to have it. <laughs> even though you can't see it right now, you need to be celebrating because you're going to see it real soon. He says here, everybody stand up, free your hands. God, God said this was going to be an interactive sermon. He did say that. Right? How many don't mind participating? How many don't mind declaring and decreeing some things into the atmosphere? How many are okay enough to be crazy for God? Is it okay to be crazy for God? How many don't mind speaking not only over your life, but over the life of the person sitting next to you? 
Uh, how many don't mind believing not just for yourself but for your family? How many don't mind believing not just for your family and yourself but for the ministry that God has sent you to? How many believe that God is about to do something stupid crazy in your life? It, that there is, a, there is something that is about to break in the atmosphere. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. I feel it deep down in my spirit. It's in my bones. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. I feel something is about to break loose. I feel abundance coming. I feel favor coming. I see a breakthrough coming. I see folks walking in some kind of thing that God's going to bless you with that you can't even explain. God says you need to start getting your mind ready. You need to start getting your body ready. You need to start getting your spirit ready. Matter of fact, you need to start getting your praise ready. You need to start getting your prayers ready because God says it's coming. It's on the way. How many are crazy enough to shout it's already done? How many are willing to give God some glory? Now here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. God's going to have me declare and decree some things over your life. Now you got to seal it by saying it's already done. How many are ready to try that? Shout, it's already done. Uh, God's going to speak some things over your life and you got to receive it and declare and receive it in your life by shouting, it's already done. Say it, it's already done. Somebody, if you know it's already done, you're healing. Your breakthrough, your promotion, your increase, your debt being canceled, your overflow, your new business, you need victory in battle, your deliverance, your family being restored, your salvation. If you need your mortgage refinanced, if you need a new job it's for the singles out there, your new spouse, good God, my, for the children that have fallen out of the will of God, somebody say it's already done. It's already done. Favor, it's done. open doors, done. abundance, it's done. blessings, it's done. overflow, it's done. healing, it's done. favor. It's already done. Give God some praise up in this place.